Thanks for joining us tonight. When someone is elected or appointed to a position of public responsibility, the people that put them there trust that they will do their jobs honestly. Sometimes that trust is broken. Recent cases are bringing public corruption into the spotlight. Our Quentin Smith speaks with an expert to look beyond the numbers. He joins us live in the studio with more. Quentin. Scott, from clerks to law enforcement officers, even to state lawmakers, many of the people that we put our trust in sometimes abuse their power. In our area, Webster County is just the latest example of alleged public corruption. Corruption is uh, taking advantage of the uh, opportunities provided by public service to enrich oneself. The sheriff's saga taking place in Webster County is just the latest example of officials accused of abusing their power. Webster County Sheriff Tim Mitchell and investigator Landon Griffin were both recently arrested and now face multiple charges, including embezzlement and trafficking firearms. We have situations like Webster County where, I mean, this is a story ready for, you know, a movie plot. Um, and it's, it's, it's tied up in greed and, and believing that somebody can get away with a lot just because they have political power. According to the Attorney General's office, 21 elected officials have been convicted of corruption in the past 10 years. Since 2008, the State Auditor's Office tells us roughly 27 public officials and three agency heads have either been convicted or indicted on public corruption. That goes along with countless others who were fired or forced to resign due to being caught up in the misconduct. Corporate America has seen plenty of examples of uh, people on the take, if you want to put it that way, uh, people being involved in uh, bribery schemes where they essentially try to uh, uh, force through business with government or with other companies. Uh, but there's also charitable organizations that have corruption problems. Corruption is a problem that's almost as old as government itself, and it often boils down to two traits, greed and selfishness. Political science professor Dr. Brian Anderson says it can also mean that something is missing in the system. That's just telling us that uh, there's not as much oversight as should be. Anderson believes there should be an oversight board to monitor all officials and help ensure that no misconduct of any kind is taking place. There are procedures, if they're set forward in a clear way, they become a matter of routine. Um, and, and it reminds you that you have to mind uh, the, the money and resources that you're in charge of and not just consider them things that you can spend like your own money. Now, the state auditor's office does not have the power to prosecute. Instead, it relies on the district attorney's office or attorney general's office to indict and prosecute those who are accused of public corruption. Scott. 